In this video on Logic's pedal board, we're going to start out by initiating the pedal board itself. I have an audio track here. We have the channel strip over here with the audio effects slot. And I'm navigating down to amps and pedals and then to pedal board here. And it says mono, and that's based on the format of my channel strip. You can see up here it's a mono channel strip. If it was stereo, we could navigate over here to a stereo version of the pedal board. Sounds are the same, it's just whether it's mono or stereo. As it opens up, you can see it looks like all the plugins you're used to. It has the header across the top. You can open and close that header with your button here on the right. You can turn it on or off, thusly, with the button here on the left. You have your settings menu here, of course, factory default, and all your settings that you're probably used to already. Next, previous to navigate with the key commands. You can copy and paste, you can load something, you can save as save you can do with these choices of saving as a default or recalling the default if you've modified things you can actually delete something as you begin to save you'll get a list of names here and here you have filters that will allow you to bring in pedals based on their type so here's overdrive we can select chunk burn and you can see something comes into the pedal area here and the pedal tube burner is in place and it has its appropriate settings so you can go through and you know, grab something else, octaves only for pitch, and notice that it replaces it. We'll talk about how to accumulate pedals and replace them here and change the chain that we have. Let's go here also and uh, look at, you have banks of stomp boxes. So if I bring something in, it actually brings in a number of the same type of pedal, but with different settings. Let's go in lastly to the complete pedal board and let's grab, I don't know, 70s metal. And you can see it has a series of pedals here that we could use and start out for a sound. Additionally, over here, we have our view, which we can change to a different size. We'll keep it 100% right now. You can also toggle to controls if that ever makes sense for you. If you need to see values a little quicker, a little easier, let's go back to editor. And finally, we have the link button over here, which allows us to keep one window open and view plugins from different channel strips. Down here is our pedal area. As you can see, we've added pedals. We'll talk about that further in additional videos. We also have a routing area up here. And you can see we have our items here. I'll explain that again also. We have over here a filter for our pedal area. This is called show all, as you can see. Now we can winnow this down. Let's go down to dynamics. And we just see one item here, which happens to be our compressor. If you move your pointer over a pedal and loiter, you'll actually get information about what that pedal does. Let's go back up and let's go back to show all. And additionally, if there are too many pedals for the window, you have your scroll bar here. You can scroll down get all your pedals. Then you have import mode. Import mode will bring you to a list of items that are either factory or things you've created. We'll talk about those more later. Let's go ahead and get out of that. And you also have a disclosure triangle here to hide that if you want to make it a smaller plugin, a smaller footprint. Lastly, down here, speaking of disclosure triangles, we have a whole macro area, and I'll talk about that in a separate video as well. So that's the introduction and overview to the pedal board. We'll get into each one of these areas in detail as we go further into the series. As always, thanks for watching. Hope this gives you a tip or trick or two, and catch you on the next one.